This is the second of two CDs of the elite and their plans and the confession of an elitist who just passed away. For three years' time, I lived with the elite of the world on the trans alaska oil pipeline by the providence of God. I was their chaplain. And as a result, came in contact with some men who are off the very top elite. They have kept in touch with me over the past 35 years, and now I bring to you the plans of the elite for this year in which we're living. The next six months, what the elite plan to do, uh, what their plans are for America. The name of the game is control, and if you ever had any doubt in your mind as to the existence of these people, may I emphatically say to you, there positively is a group of people on the face of the earth who control the world. I don't know how to say it anymore, any more honestly. I lived with them. I know who they are. I've been in touch with them for many years. One of these individuals just passed away, died, only days ago. And as a result, I decided to prepare these CDs so that you can know everything. He told me everything before he passed away. The elite plan and what they plan for America, their methodology, and how they plan to do it. A good example of this is what they have done in outsourcing America in uh, free trade, uh, which is not free trade at all. The elite had to bring America to a certain point. And you've heard me use the expression in some of my other CDs. By the way, if you do not have my six DVD set, I would urge you, to get eight hours of professionally done DVD viewing, six DVDs, eight hours of viewing, in which I give all of my testimony and everything that the elite have given me over these years. It is a library of information within itself. And if you don't have it, I would urge you, because then you'll understand some of what I'm saying today. The elite had to bring America to a certain point. And on my DVD series, I use the expression devil's messiah. One of the things that one of the elitists said to me one day was that they had a religious plan whereby they would dismantle the God of America, and they could not bring in their new world order until they had taken away the God on which America was founded and the foundation of this nation. Now, you and I know what that is. That's the word of God. That's the Bible. This is the true and living God, the only one that we can trust for our salvation, the one in whom we have eternal life through his son was Jesus Christ. They had to dismantle all of that before they could bring America into the new world order. Now, they have outsourced this country. And I think one of the greatest examples of what the elite are doing right now is an item that you will find so startling when you hear now, again, may I say, all of this is being done intentionally. This is, this is not by chance. This is all planned years and years in advance behind closed doors. I was told about it, and I said it and put it on DVDs years ago so that no one could ever say that it just happened by chance. We're going to play for you one of the current events of how the elite are literally dismantling this country piece by piece in order to bring it to the point where they want it. They want it at a point where they can get it for pennies on the dollar, so to speak. Let, let me put it this way. In order for the elite to own anything, they bankrupt it first, whether it be an airline, a railroad, whether it be a business, whether it be Chrysler, whether it be uh, uh, General Motors. First of all, they brought it to a point of bankruptcy. Then, by way of the Federal Reserve, which is not a part of the government of the United States of America, any more than Federal Express is, and through the Treasury, whereby they actually took taxpayers' dollars in order to do it, they bought and gobbled up General Motors and Chrysler. And today, who owns them? The Federal Government of the United States of America. But really, who owns them? They own it through the Federal Reserve. The elite themselves own it. And what did they get it for? Nothing. Nothing but a piece of paper, a computer entry from the Federal Reserve. Now, that's exactly what they want to do with America. At some point, the elite will bring America to the point that they will own this entire country, but they bankrupt it first, 
here is a perfect example of how they are doing this. I mean, it is amazing. I go, if you stand on Bart Car, if you stand on Scottsdale Road and watch cars go by, if I was to blindfold you, put you in a helicopter, and drop you, could be anywhere in the world, and you stood on Scottsdale Road this morning and watched the cars that head out, you wouldn't know what country you were in. You would not. You know, kind of like the Indian who used to stand on the hill in the commercials and look, oh, at, yeah, with the, look with at the, the trash, trash, with the tear. That was a great trip. I picture the World War II vets. I mean, they got to be standing there. Those They would come back and look at what they fought for in the sea of foreign cars and everything that they fought for, the American way of life, is just given away. It's given away so much more you can't really even imagine. You can't even imagine how much it is. This is how much they've lied to us. I'm going to start with an email I got here from a customer this past Saturday. It says, Dear Eric, this past Saturday I was able to take a tour of an ADM flour mill in North Kansas City, Missouri. My father-in-law has been employed there for 30 years, and I've long been curious about the operations of the mill. And the timing of this tour is related to the fact that disassembly of the mill begins this week as the property has been sold. The city of Kansas City has purchased the property with the intent of demolishing the landmark and building, and you guessed it, replacing it with a Walmart. In operation since 1922, the city will officially take possession October 2011, with the mill going the way of Armco Steel and KW Dart, just to name a few. We took a few moments to walk onto the roof and look at the Kansas City skyline. To the east lies vacant lots where ConAgra and Grooch Mills once stood. The view to the south reveals an abandoned Ralston Perina Mill. Slightly further south lies the brand new Senator Christopher Bond Bridge on I-35 spanning the Missouri River. An indication to me of the reality of the NAFTA superhighway. As a kid growing up in Kansas City, I used to think that if you could... Get a job at Ford, General Motors, or TWA, you could be set for life. In fact, it was a visit to the TWA overhaul base that led me to my career as an aircraft mechanic. I was in awe of the size and magnificent capabilities of the facility. Well, I don't have to tell you about Ford and GM. And just last month, after years of downsizing, the last few hundred mechanics turned out the lights at that historic overhaul base, most recently operated by American Airlines. While never employed there, I am, too, no longer working in aviation. Take a drive a few blocks east of the airport, and you'll find the Kansas City Harley-Davidson assembly plant, where it was recently announced that employees will be asked for wage concessions. And, of course, they also announced an agreement yesterday with India. Yes, Yes, that was big news. Harley-Davidson in India. Who knew the Indian motorcycle would end up in India? But I'm sure you understand the frustration that when you get, when your friends family, and acquaintances either don't or choose not to understand the situation our once great country is in. Maybe I'm the dumbest guy in the Kansas City area, and there was North Kansas City councilmen who believe their community will prosper with only retail and casinos are the smart ones. You and I know differently. Pacific Century Motors, okay, they're going to be the largest employer in Saginaw, Michigan, In this landmark deal of the era, the first time Chinese investors have uh, bought a U.S. industrial operation of such a scale and history. 22 factories around the globe, six six engineering centers, 14 customer support centers, all of which will be run from Saginaw, where devotion to the company extended to a now defunct hockey team. It used to call itself the Gears. The deal will, of course test China's nascent foreign investment and management prowess, but it's shaping up to be more of a test of a state side where attitudes against China continue to coarsen as unemployment continues high and politicians complain about China taking U.S. jobs, if not U.S. pride. During World War II, Saginaw steering gear manufactured M1 carbines used by the Marines in the Pacific. Did it really need to be sold to the Chinese? Are you kidding me? We saw it's selling the soul to keep these few jobs that are left in Saginaw. The Chinese could care less about the jobs in Saginaw. They wanted the technology, the steering technologies and all of those things so they could flood our shores with their cars. You know it and I know it. My little brother told me, though, he said, you don't have to worry about going to war with China because they could only fire one bullet till their gun broke. 
But now, I mean, here they got the SAG. That's a, that's a little creepy. They got the M1 factory. They got 22 plants. No, no, this is normal. This is how successful countries, ladies and gentlemen, prosper. This is how they do it. We just give it away now, which would be all fine and dandy. See, they really cared about Pearl Harbor and the Japanese. Everybody got that over. But the one thing that, that runs true in this country is that every conflict was to eradicate communism off the planet. Now we just heck we just give them, we just sell them the factory. Well, here's that made the M one. We we gave the crappy stuff and we put it into government liquidations. In other words, the stuff that was worthless we stuck over in this other company. This is actually stuff that they said this is good stuff, and we've just given it to the Chinese. It's amazing. This really is. This is the ultimate insult. This is the ultimate slap in the face. The ultimate outsourcing of America. Free trade, new world order, it's all a part of the same thing. Now, what was it that China really wanted by buying that industry? It, it wasn't to help the American people. And, of course, the elite, uh, people oftentimes ask me, do the elite control China and Russia as well as they do America? Sure they do. They just do it by a little different method sometimes. Outsourcing of America so that they can bring it to its knees, so that they can basically own everything in this country is their ultimate goal, and over a period of a few lifetimes, bring it back to the point where it is. Now, what was it that China really wanted by buying that industry? They wanted the patents. They have the patents to the guns. They have the patents to the automobile parts. All of these things now are owned by China. They're, what are they going to do with them? They'll take them right to China and put them in practice in one of their own plants and then close down everything in that city. Uh, every bit of this is a part of what I have been told by the elite of the world that they wish to do in order to bring America to a point where they basically can own and take over everything. The name of the game is control, and they'll be able to get it for pennies on the dollar. Well, there are a lot of people in, in the elite who live in America who know this, and they are doing something that is startling beyond words. I'm going to go to the subject of insider trading, the New York stock, stock market, Wall Street, as you oftentimes hear it talked about. Uh, they have what they call insider trading. Let me try to explain. There's the average John Q. public out here on the street that buys stocks uh, through a stockbroker. Uh, then there are inside traders, and Wall Street keeps a record of the insider traders that are required to by law of the United States government because they want to know when a person sells the stock of their company in order to try to be able to do something illegally. So they keep a record of insider trading. So these are the CEOs, the uh, corporate heads, uh, the people, many of them who are the elite. Not all of them are the elite, but many of them are. And the insider trading compared to the John Q. public trading, uh, that gives you an idea as to who the inside trading is. So let me explain that. On, on a few dates here. Let me go back to September the 13th through the 17th. Insider trading compared to the average person out on the street that deals in stocks of the, through the New York Stock Exchange. Insider trading was 400 to 1 on September the 13th through the 17th. That means that there were 400 insider traders, CEOs of corporations, presidents of corporations, that had sold the stock, uh, whatever stock it may have been, whether it was in their own company or some other company, compared to one person who is the John Q. Public out there trading on the New York Stock Market, 401. That's the highest it had ever been in the history of the New York Stock Market on that date, September the 13th through 17th, 401. Then we became very alarmed when on October the 4th through the 8th, that had gone up to 1,600 to 1. And all I was wondering, what in this world is going on? Then, on October the 25th through the 29th, we were, we were again very alarmed because it went up to 
3,177 to 1. Now, what is it that these insiders know that were causing them to sell the stock of their own company, get out of the New York stock market, and, and, and get out of Wall Street altogether? These corporate had many of them uh, being what I would call the elite. Then we come down to just a few days ago. Are you ready? Here it is. The very uh, this this is this. I don't know how to even put this. You hear me even wonder how to get the words together to say it. November the fifteenth through the nineteenth, inside of trading was eight thousand two hundred and eighty to one. Corporate heads, CEOs, the elite of the inner core who were selling stocks in the from their own company, getting out of the stock market, bailing out, and bailing out to a tune that is so alarming that we're afraid to even talk about it anymore. Well, why are they doing this? What is it that they know that the average person on the street does not know? I think you have already gathered from the recordings you've heard from the things I've said, that the elite are accelerating their program. They are accomplishing everything they want. And we, as individuals, need to take action immediately. Now, I'm going to go to another subject here that I think is so very important for your household and for mine. I was told uh, that there will be no shortage of food and water. Now, through all of this, through, through the deterioration of the dollar, through the outsourcing of America, even though so many people are on the unemployment rolls in this country now, even though uh, with all the things that are taking place in America, you're hearing many talk show hosts around the country say that we're going to have a shortage of food. Well, uh, yes and no. Let me try to explain the mindset of the elite as to how they think in order to explain what they're going to do. Uh, as it was said to me, there will be no shortage of food or water, but yet you won't be able to buy it. Believe me, the grocery store shelves are going to be full. You don't see any blank grocery store shelves anywhere across America, and you won't because in their new world order method of doing things, there will be no shortage on the grocery store shelves yet you will not have the currency to be able to buy it. Uh, are you getting the message as to what these uh, elite are telling to me? The grocery store shelves will full, be full, but you will go hungry. Why? It's the destruction of the American dollar. Now, you heard this from uh, the, the uh, European Union a few moments ago. You, you've heard it from other people that we've played. Uh, the American dollar is on the way out. The world doesn't accept it any longer uh, as its uh, standard currency of the world, as a reserve currency. Uh, the new deal that was just made between Russia and China recently for the supply of energy left out the, the American dollar as the currency by which they wish to trade it. And it's just a matter of time. As the elite said to me, by 2012, the dollar will be dead. Now, if you want food... You had best buy what you can and buy it soon because it's not the fact that the food won't be there. The food will be on the grocery store shelves. The stores will be full. But the problem is when you have to take a wheelbarrow load of dollar bills to the grocery store in order to be able to buy that food because the currency has devalued to the point. You see, so many nations in the world now are saying, we don't want your T-bills. We don't want to buy your debt any longer. And as a result, the American dollar is on its way out. Do I need to say more? Uh, I, I don't have time on these CDs to be able to give any more details except to say I asked this elitist. I said, okay, uh, what can I do? How do I spare my household uh, in light and my dinner table in light of all of these things? How do I, uh, how can I spare my assets? What do I do? Where do I invest? If you have anything at all to invest, or, or you're going to do, what, what do you do? He said to me, now, uh, I'm giving it as plainly as I can. I do not sell gold. I do not sell silver. I, I will not even tell you where to go. There are many places out there you can do it. I will say this. I asked him, I said, how do I spare my assets 
in light of the fact that the American dollar is going to be a thing of the past. And it's just a matter of time, as they had said, by 2012, the dollar will be dead. He said, Chaplain, it's our currency. And I said, well, what is your currency? He said, gold and silver. And he said, it's going to go up and up and up and up. He said, it is the only thing that you can depend on to spare your assets in light of what's taking place in the world today is gold and silver. Now, this does create a problem for me, for you, and for most of us who didn't do what we should back years ago and believe, as God's Word has said, what the real value there is. You know, the first metal ever mentioned in the Bible is mentioned in the book of Genesis, and it's gold. God literally took it and swung it all over the world in little bitty pieces. It's something that has been used as a standard for, to back up every currency in the world for all the years. It's the thing that Abraham and Moses used as their standard back in those days. And the elite today realize what that is. We've taken it out of Fort Knox, done away with it. We've sold it here in Yon. Uh, the American dollar has nothing to back it up with. But he said to me, he said, Chaplain, the only thing that will continue to hold its value and maintain its worth is gold and silver. He said it's our currency. The problem that you and I have so much is the fact it's gone so high in price. It's already gone up to, oh, my goodness, astronomical figures. But you haven't seen anything yet. You just wait until it gets up to two and $3,000 an ounce, and it's only a matter of time, so they have told me, until that happens. Well, the next thing that I think you need to watch very carefully is your house mortgage. You're going to hear more and more about mortgage-backed securities, MBS. It will be a major issue from this point on in America. And again, it was created, this crisis was created back in the 70s and 80s by the elite. So they have let me know. They created the commercial and residential mortgage crisis whereby people took out the teaser loans, the interest-only loans. And then, of course, when these cycled, we have now a $45 trillion commercial residential mortgage-backed securities issue that's facing America, and it can't be resolved. The crisis has been created for the purpose of takeover. Again, it's just one more method of the elitists to do what they want to do. Eventually... The government will have to bail out the mortgage-backed security industry. It's only a matter of time. I thought maybe that they might do it shortly, but the elite now have had some problems because of the election recently, and it's going to take them a little while to do what they want to do. But they're going to have to bail that out to the tune of somewhere around 2 to $7 trillion. They're not quite sure what they're going to ask the American taxpayer to do you are going to see a bailout of the mortgage-backed security problem. Basically, here it is. You bought a house a number of years ago. You financed it through a lending institution. That lending institution, in turn, took all those securities, all those mortgages, and they sliced them and diced them, put them together in packages of hundreds, and sold them all over the world. They sold them to, from insurance companies to people in China and Japan and, and Great Britain. They sold them all over the world in these packages of mortgage-backed securities, they called it, a package of them. Now, you go to the bank and you say, where's my paperwork on my house? Usually they can't produce it for you. They cannot show you where they owned it because they've sold it. In most cases, they don't even know where it's been sold. All they know is that they're servicing that mortgage for somebody, maybe in China or Europe or someplace else. They don't know. And it has become such a paper trail nightmare that the federal government and the banks are at their wit's end to know what to do. This is called mortgage-backed securities. And basically what the elite want, so I have been told, is they want the government of the United States of America to bail out this problem of mortgage-backed securities. And whenever it's all done and finished and everything is over with, here's what will happen. The elite of the world, through the Federal Reserve, because they are the Federal Reserve, through the Treasury of the United States of America and through the American taxpayer, letting you know or telling you that convincing you that you have to bail these plans out, the elite of the world will own every mortgaged piece of property in the United States of America, whether it be commercial or residential. If you have a mortgage on your house or on your business, 
eventually, according to the plans of the elite, they will own that mortgage because of the mortgage-backed security problem. This is something you really need to look into. You need to watch it very carefully because it's the next, what should we say, created, manufactured crisis that they want to take place in this country, and then they'll try to convince you to do something about it. Now, there was another expression that's been used to me by the elite many times, and this is the expression, devil's messiah. I'm not going to go into this much except to refer you to my DVD series and beg you to listen to what they had to say because the only way that the elite could take over this nation is to remove its God. That is the God upon which America was founded. When the pilgrims came here for religious freedom, the true and living God, they had to remove that in order to be able to take over this nation. And one of the things that they're doing now, and this is being initiated in counties all over America, is uh, this was brought to my attention the other day when I was up in Yavapai County, just north of the area where I live. Uh, and there was a pastor by the name of Pastor Posedley. And they just built a beautiful new church. When the pastor went in to get all the final paperwork done and for them to move into the church, he had made friends with one of the county heads of the county department there and the person said to him pastor you're about to move into this beautiful little new church it'll seat a few hundred people but i need to tell you of the apple pie county has just put in a county ordinance and the county ordinance states that anytime anyone does not like this church they, they don't like what you do they don't like the way you preach they don't like the way you sing if there's any complaint whatsoever made against your church this county ordinance says that we have a right to come in and to close down your church, padlock the door, and even though you own it, you cannot use it as a place for the people to congregate any further. Now, this is being done all over America. It's being done very quietly. And I'll tell you why it's being done in just a moment. We can prove that it also is done in Mesa, Arizona. It was on the front page of the Arizona Republic recently that such an ordinance has gone through. I know that they would never enforce this right now, but they will in the future. Whenever the man of sin described in the Bible as the Antichrist, when he is ready to take over and he knows it's his time, he will have everything in place in order to be able to step in and say, your church can't hold services next Sunday because we say so. Somebody's made a complaint. See, every bit of this is for the purpose. That devil's messiah plan, whereby they initiated evolution into our schools. They have taken the Ten Commandments off of courthouses all over America. They have removed God from our national life. They want to take off of the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag the name of God, on and on and on you go. Every bit of this is a part of the devil's Messiah plan whereby they had to destroy the foundation of this nation and its godly heritage before they could put in their new world order. Well, I'll skip over again to something that I promised to give you in this second DVD, and that is the crisis in the Middle East. You remember that I was told two years ago by this elitist friend of mine, that we didn't have any problem whatsoever with Iran as far as the crisis. There was going to be no war with Iran. And that was back in the times when we had warships sitting over there ready. Our Air Force, our Navy, our Army was right ready. All of us thought that we were going to have a crisis with Iran. It was being said by talk show hosts all over the country, we were about to go to war with Iran. And this elitist friend of mine said to me one day on the phone, he said, Chaplain, there's not going to be any war with Iran for at least the next two years. Well, we've gone by those two years. And everything he told me was right. Now, not what I said was right, but what this individual who knows everything that goes on behind closed doors, one of the elitists himself, what he told me took place exactly as he had said it. And we've gone by now for two years without a crisis in Iran Six months ago, a radio talk show host called me and he said, Chaplain, uh, it looks like we're going to have a problem with Iran again. Well, I went to my latest friend and I said, what about it? He said, no. He said, I told you nothing would happen for two years. You see, they control war. They start it and stop it when they want it. When it's to their advantage, they begin one. Well, it's time. That's right. 
I, I'm giving you, as I said, a date. They want a crisis. Now, please hear the words of what they're saying. The elite want a Middle East crisis within four to five months. That's all I'm going to say. I did not say there's going to be war with Iran. It may be, but they want a Middle East crisis within the next four to five months' time. Now, I want to go over and give you another sign. I promised you when we began the first CD in this series that in the course of of these presentations, I would give you some of the signs that the elite have given to me as to what they're doing. I want to give you another sign at this point. Write it down, put it beside your calendar, and you will see it take place exactly as they said. They said to me, watch crude oil prices and you will know the progression of the program. And what they were saying is, watch crude oil prices and you'll know the progression of the elite's program. You'll remember a number of years ago, one of the elites said to me, the price of crude oil is going from $147 a barrel to $50 a barrel. I went on radio talk shows all across America and said that. People laughed at me. Talk show hosts laughed at me. They said, you're crazy. You shouldn't say that. And exactly two months later, exactly as I'd been told it, it took place. People said, you're a prophet. I said, no, I'm not. I'm just an ordinary man that puts on my britches just like you do every morning. The only difference is... I know the elite, and they give me this information by the providence of God. I give you the information so that you can prepare your household in light of what they're doing. Watch, here's a sign, watch crude oil prices, and you will know the progression of the elite's program, what they're doing. Now, crude oil has gone back up again. It went up to $70 a barrel, then up to $80 a barrel, up to $90 a barrel. I'll tell you where it's going. It's going to $150 to $200 a barrel, and you're going to be paying 4 to $5 a gallon at the gas pump. They're going to do this very gradually. They do not want you to jump out of the saddle. They want it like a frog boiling in a pot. They do not want revolution. The last thing in this world the elite want is revolution. They do not want you to wake up in mass. They want you to become accustomed to their controls, and they are going to raise the price of crude oil back. I told you before where it was going, when it was going down. I'm telling you again, I have been notified. They are going back up on the price again, and within somewhere of 7 to 9, maybe 10 to 12, depending on how fast they can do it, they're taking the price back up to 4 to $5 a gallon at the gas pump. What's this going to do? It's going to cause massive inflation. It will affect grocery prices. It will affect the trucking lines and the freight lines, uh, the railroads. It's very important for you to prepare yourself now for the inevitable. Well, I come down to what was said just the other day by Janet Napolitano, and I, I must bring you to to where the reality of all of this is. Uh, just the other day, a very prominent Hispanic political activist in the Phoenix area, uh, a very devout Christian lady, um, she had been offered a job by Janet Napolitano when Janet Napolitano left being the governor of Arizona and went to Washington to take over Homeland Security uh, under this presidential uh, uh, administration right now. And she had been offered the job as liaison between the Spanish communities of America and Homeland Security. She filled out all the paperwork, was accepted, went to Washington to accept her job. And when she got there, she met with our president and Janet Napolitano. And they said, now, there are a few things. We know that you're a Christian and, and you hold certain standards. Uh, this is one of the reasons we want you there. We know you're honest, but they said there are a few things you can't talk about. You cannot talk about uh, homosexuality. You cannot talk about lesbians, and you positively can in no way disagree with the president's policies. And this individual said to Janet Napolitano at a private uh, and, and to the president and said to them, I cannot do that. I am a Christian. I will not deny my Lord and she turned down a job for $170,000 a year. Just a few days ago, this individual was back in Washington trying to raise some money for one of her Hispanic organizations. Janet Napolitano found out she was there and contacted her by phone 
and said, can we have dinner together? And they did, private, just the two of them. And Janet said, you know, you and I have been friends for a long time. And she said, I am saying this to only a very few select of my personal friends. And she said, I consider you to be that, even though you didn't take the job. She said, I want you to go back home and called her by name and said, immediately, I want you to get six months supply of food and water into your house. This individual said to Janet Napolitano, why are you saying this? She said, I cannot tell you. She said, it is drastic. And she said, there is something in the wind. And she said, please, just take my advice and go back home immediately and get six months supply of food and water into your house. Now, when this individual returned back to Arizona, they were in contact with us and told us exactly what had been said by Janet Napolitano. These are buzzwords. The elite must tell in advance what they're going to do. Janet Napolitano knew very well that this individual would tell some of her friends back here, and she never told her not to. And I am begging you to take notice of what's happening in America, to the things that you've heard on these CDs, and do something about it. As a result of all of this, I have become so concerned that I did these CDs, and I'm also doing something else. I have decided, based on what this elitist friend of mine told me, many confessions that he made to me, and things that I have learned from him over the past 35 years, I have decided to produce an entire series. I have kept meticulous notes over these 35 years of everything the elite have told me. I have watched what they were doing in the outsourcing of America and removing our freedoms. I have seen them take the industry from America and take it to other nations so that they basically could bankrupt Chrysler and General Motors and many of the other industries of America. I've seen them put people out on the streets, out of jobs, because they want to bring America to its knees so that they can own it. And I go back again to the fact the elite never take over anything until they can get it free of charge. You taxpayers will actually bail out the industries of America that they want to stay in business, and the rest of them, they will let them fail. Well, I have seen the whole scenario materialize over a 35-year period to the point that I have decided to take my very meticulous notes I've kept over these years and produce an entire series. Now, it's going to take me a year or two to do this. But I want to tell you the titles of some of the things that I'm going to give in this series, and then when they become available, you can have them because it, it will be like a course in any college. It will be an education of what the elite have told me. I'm going to deal, first of all, with the subject of the Arab world, the Muslims, jihad. Yes, that's right. This gentleman said to me on the phone one day, he said, Chaplain, you don't really understand the Arab mind. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I live there. He said, I produced the oil fields in United Arab Emirates and in, in Dubai. And he said, I want to tell you some things about Saudi Arabia and other countries. And he went into detail explaining all of this to me. And I hope to be able to do this for you and to actually give you a course on this. I'm going to produce another series of DVDs entitled China, Russia, and George Herbert Bush. You do realize that China was a closed society 75 to 80 years ago. They weren't doing business with anybody outside. And all of a sudden, George Herbert Bush became the ambassador to China, who later became the president of the United States of America who was the daddy of our former Bush president. And he at one time was president himself after Reagan. And you'll remember it. All of this is a story of intrigue. And the way that the elite have told it to me is startling. I'm going to produce a whole series on China, Russia, and George Herbert Bush. I'm going to produce another series entitled Iran, Iraq, and Afghanistan. They've never told us why we're in Afghanistan. But I know why they've told me. In it will be Henry Kissinger and Abner Dethridge. Oh, I know Abner Dethridge doesn't mean anything to you. But he means a lot to me because Abner Dethridge was the man who took the message from President Bush, Daddy Bush, uh, to Saddam. We will do nothing if you decide to take over Kuwait. You remember Kuwait and Iraq prior to the last world war was one country. 
And basically what Saddam was doing was going back in and taking over his own land. The message was actually sent, Abner Deathridge, to Saddam to say, we won't do anything. It was a trap. President Bush knew all the time that he was going to go in there and do exactly what he did because of a reason which involves Iran and Iraq would not sign an agreement with Henry Kissinger. You're going to be intrigued by this. I plan to produce a series entitled The New World Order. I've given part of it here today, but I'll give more. The Devil's Messiah. This needs to have an entire series produced on it. Another series entitled America and the Elite, their most difficult challenge. The greatest challenge in the world that the elite have had in setting up their New World Order is the United States of America. They've had no trouble with Europe. The euro, of course, is going to crash, as I gave you earlier in our CDs. You'll see it crash, and you've got somewhere in the neighborhood of X number of days before the American dollar. And you'd better do something in that period of time. Whenever you see the euro, whenever you see the European Union have a major problem, as was described by the individual that you heard earlier, and whenever you see the euro crash, you had better do something about the paper you have. Now, that's every kind of paper from stocks to bonds to retirement income to American dollars that you may have between the mattress. You've got X number of days to do something about that. I need to produce the most difficult challenge that the elite have had, so they have let me know, is the United States of America. They had to destroy our heritage, our God, in order to be able to take us over. Again, I need to deal with the subject of Gull Island and the Arctic Wildlife Refuge. This would be a series within its own the back on the reserve and the fact that we could be totally independent from the rest of the world as far as energy and crude oil and natural gas. We have been betrayed by Congress. You literally have seen a horror story take place in the Congress of the United States of America because they've been bought off. This is a story that needs to be told. Abiotic oil and peak oil and the super deep wells is something else. And what happened in the Gulf of Mexico? This would easily make an entire DVD set. Arab oil fields and the oil companies, the American debt, and how it all fits in with Henry Kissinger and Iraq and Iran and Saddam. What a story that the elite have told me over the years with all of this. China and George Herbert Bush and China the big one, he said, the elite told me. All of these things are things that need to be put into DVD and hopefully over these next few months I'll be able to do that. But in the meantime, there are 12 things that in light of what you've heard on these CDs and in light of what the elite have told me, there are 12 things that you need to do immediately. Now, you have pencils and paper. I hope you'll jot them down and help your friends and neighbors understand this. This is a checklist, a must list of what you need to do immediately in light of what's happening to America. There's no doubt but that the fact that America is there in the end times. It's just what state we will be in and what the elite will be doing with America at that point in light of the fact that they want to make China and other countries the big ones at that point. So watch China and Russia, as I've been told, and I've tried to express this to you, that the elite have said to me, don't pay any attention to what's going on in North and South Korea. What's happening in the Middle East, whenever we have a skirmish over there, don't let it bother you at all. The big skirmish will come later. Right now, you need to focus your attention on Russia and China. They are the ones, what takes place there is going to affect your dinner table and the United States of America in a massive way. And they have their plans for China also. They know what they're doing to America. The outsourcing, the dismantling of America, the taking of our jobs abroad. But at the same time, we are buying Chinese products and China owns so much of our national debt that when the American dollar crashes, they will bring America to its, uh, they will bring China, not only America, and not only the euro. You see, this is a worldwide new world order. And the plans of the elite are to control China, as well as the United States of America, as well as the euro. And every bit of this will be brought about through the destruction of their currencies, the dismantling of the countries, and bringing them to a point where they can literally own everything that's there. They want total control of the entire world is their ultimate goal. In the meantime, for you and me to survive in the United States of America under the conditions that they plan 
to bring this country to, what do you need to do? I'd like to give you 12 things. Number one, please do what Janet Apolitano said to this individual when she went to Washington the other day. She said, get six months of food and water. Oh, I know, there's going to be plenty of food on the grocery store shelves. There will not be empty shelves on the grocery stores. You will have plenty of produce and other food in the stores. There is going to be no shortage of food and water. There is going to be a shortage of a currency with any value in which to purchase that food and water. And if you want it right now, do what Janet Napolitano said to this individual. Get yourself six months of food. Secondly, stock market. Oh, I beg of you to take note of what you've heard on these CDs, and if you have anything involved in Wall Street, take action immediately. These are decisions you'll have to make. I cannot tell you what to do, but listen to Tony Robbins. You'll find him on YouTube. Just type in Tony Robbins, R-O-B-I-N-S. If you don't want to believe me, then believe a person who deals in stocks every day. And just listen to what this man is saying. Cash. You need to have some in your house. What are you going to do whenever the European Union crashes and you have X number of days or weeks in order to set your house in order? The cash is going to be king. But what you have in the bank may not even do you any good. You may not be able to write. You may not be able to go to the machine and pull cash out. You may not be able to go to the bank and pull out but a certain amount. But if you have it, you need to make preparations right now to have at least a month or two supply in your personal hand in order to be able to maintain yourself when cash is king in the interim period that's going to take place there. 401Ks, IRAs, retirement funds, you cannot depend on them. There are some things that you can do with some of these right now. And those of you who can and are willing to, you decide for yourself what you're going to do. Gold and silver, I know it's very high priced. Many of us can't afford it anymore. You need to have some. The elite have told me that it is the only thing that will maintain its value and continue to go up and hold it. Once you get it, hold it. Don't take paper. Don't let some gold dealer say, okay, we'll give you a piece of paper saying we're holding it in our vault. Not on your life. Uh, This is something you hold in your hands, and you decide what to do with it. Travel is going to be affected by all of this. Expect disruptions. Airline fares are going up. When gasoline goes to $4 to $6 a gallon, crude oil goes to $150 to $200 a barrel, it is going to drastically affect what the airlines and the trucking lines and even the railroads do in America. You need to take some thought as to what you're going to do in light of this. Most people can't do it but pay off your debts. I care not what it takes for you to do it. Downsize, do anything you have to. Get a paid-for roof over your head, even if it's nothing but a log cabin. When the elite have taken care of this mortgage-backed security problem through the Treasury, through the Federal Reserve, you will basically be making your house payment to the Federal Reserve at that point. They will own every mortgage piece of real estate in the United States of America, whether it be commercial or residential. You need a paid-for roof over your head. Somehow find a way to do it and do it quickly because that mortgage of yours is going to be worth whatever they want that piece of paper to be worth. Government intervention into your life. Be prepared for it. It is going to take place. There will be more and more as time goes by. Prepare as many of the elite have done. Firearms, make up your mind what you need to do and do something about it. Spiritually, set your spiritual house in order and do it as quickly as you can. I made a a survey of where the elite lived. I went to some of them. I asked them what they were doing. What have they done? I have not found a single elitist that I know that lives in a city. Every single one of them have moved out someplace into the wide open spaces. Why? They know what the inevitable is going to do and to be. And as a result, they have moved out somewhere else. Listen to these buzzwords. Learn how to tune your ear to what they're doing. Just this morning, the Federal Reserve borrowed $6.81 billion. It's 
just today, today alone, in order to meet the obligations of the indebtedness that the United States of America has. They can't continue that. And this elitist told me before he passed away, he said, Chaplain, when the Federal Reserve starts buying their own debt because others don't buy our T-bills and our bonds, he said, we are on the last leg. We're there. We're there now. Set your spiritual house in order. God's Word makes it very plain. It said in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. You don't have to stay awake at night. There's no reason to worry. You don't have to lose sleep. Don't look behind bushes to see a booger in every one. Set things in order now, and you won't have to worry about it when the elite accomplish what they want, if they're able to accomplish it, which I hope they won't. I hope all of this fails by the elite. I hope the American people wake up in time. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest, the Bible says. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Turn to the Lord. Set that spiritual house in order immediately. As soon as you get through with these DVDs, get out on your knees and do what Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10 in the Word of God says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And I'm sure you know it from the time you were a child. For God so loved the world, John 3:16 that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Set that spiritual house in order right now, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Set that house in order. We're living in some very startling times. They're very trying times. But they need not to be times of fear. They need to be times of knowledge and faith in the right one. That is our Lord who died for us on the cross and his salvation that he has given to each one of us. Set the house in order. I hope that these CDs will be a great help to you and a blessing. We've never produced anything like this before. I want to thank Stan Johnson and the Prophecy Club for allowing me to have access to their equipment so that this material can be produced. And I encourage you to go to their website of prophecyclub.com. They have a multitude of DVDs there and great materials that you need to supplement what you've heard today and to advance your thinking as to the whole story and the total ramification of this. So I would urge you to go to prophecyclub.com and look over their materials. And again, I say thank you to Stan. And right now, as soon as we finish up, get out on your knees. Pour out your heart to the Lord. Set your heart right. Do what you saw on my DVD series the two individuals on the Trans-Alaska Oil Pipeline, one who accepted Christ as Savior and another one who died in an airplane accident after he said, Chaplain, I'll do it later. Don't wait till later. Later may be too late. Set things in order now. So, Stan, thank you for your time. Thank you for your equipment. God bless, and I wish each one the best in doing that, which you know you need to do. Pray about it and take action. Stan. Lizzie, thank you for sharing that information. Folks, let me encourage you to get all of the information available from Lindsay Williams. The first set, recorded in October 2009, is called Agenda 2012. The bullet points are, discover their plans through 2012. Will the economy improve? Will the price of gold and silver go down? Can we turn America around? Will the U.S. be involved in war? Will Iran and Israel go to war? According to the elite, what is money? He discusses the devil's Messiah. Lindsay also explains their buzzwords, their hidden plans revealed openly in the news, given in plain sight, and how to listen for them. 
recorded in January 2010, is called 2010 and Beyond. Using charts, diagrams, and video revelations, Lindsay explains his new conversation. Topics are 2010 Economics and Beyond, the Dubai world and how derivatives will cause a worldwide financial collapse. You have food, but no money to buy it. China will become the new world power. The next war, the dollar will fall from 30 to 50 percent in the next 12 to 18 months. You can obtain these copies by calling the Prophecy Club, 785-266-1112, or go online to prophecyclub.com. That's P-R-O-P-H-E-C-Y, prophecyclub.com, or 785-266-1112. And while you're there, be sure and browse the website for many other DVDs. We are probably the largest source of Bible prophecy and warning information on the globe. That's prophecyclub.com. God bless.